Hello, everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathy Super Sessions by Dr. Jahus. Today, I'll be doing Robert's Chapter 12, that is a classification of disease. I've divided this chapter into three parts. So we'll see what the first part has in store for us today. This was done on the request of one of my viewers who would, who would like to know more about the chapter. All scientific advancement shows great progress over a period of time. So naturally, any scientific advancement as time passes or as time progresses, it will show some new and new progress will be made in the scientific advancement. In the early 17th century, the Swedish student Linnaeus studied the flora of the world, which was then largely unclassified. So in the 17th century, the flora of the world was studied by Swedish student Linnaeus, but it was largely unclassified, or in short, no classification was given. Through his enormous endeavors, he classified the vegetable kingdom and laid down a system of classification which would be applicable to further discoveries. However, in his constant progress to, to study or to classify the flora of the world, he was able to classify the vegetable kingdom and this laid down the foundation stone for the other classifications to take place or newer discoveries to take place. In 1817 and 1818, Cuvier studied the animal kingdom, the knowledge of that kingdom being at that time disjointed and unclassified. So another personality in 1870 to 1818 by the name of Cuvier, he studied the animal kingdom. And, and of course, this animal kingdom also, it was unclassified. Through his impressive labors, he classified all animals into four great kingdoms. However, Cuvier was, been, I mean, was able to classify the animal kingdom into four great kingdoms. That is the vertebrates, the mollusks, the articulates, and the radiates. In these four great families, all animal life can be classified. A contemporary of Cuvier was Samuel Hanin. At that period, a disease was known only by a few named disease with no relationship or method of classification. So during Hanneman's time, there was a few diseases and it had only a handful of diseases over there which, were pro which had proper name or proper diagnosis. But it had no relationship or method of classification. But there wasn't any scientific method to classify the disease. Medical practice was an extremely chaotic condition and was not free from superstition. So during that time, medical practice was in a chaotic condition. And of course, it was not free from superstition. So superstitions did prevail during Hanneman's time. And it was, I mean, and the treatment also given was quite pathetic. It was still through that disease were the work of the evil one and no comprehensive study of disease condition was made it was still thought that disease was the work of the evil one. So they thought the disease in the olden days or the medieval days or during the time of Dr. Samuel Hanneman also, they found out that the disease may be due to superstitions or it may be due to some evil force which is working on an individual and no comprehensive studies of disease condition was made. But no proper study of the disease condition was made, how it occurred and why it occurred. In order to know the correct origin and relationship of disease, it was necessary to make some close observations of the of then known diseases and then proceed to deductions and proper classifications. So in order to know the correct origin and the relationship of disease or in order to classify the disease correctly, it was necessary to make close observations. So you have to observe the disease phenomena and then proceed with the proper classification. Hanneman, with his logical and scientific mind, he made the first classification of disease that had ever been attempted. So Hanneman, with his logical and scientific mind, he classified the diseases and a good attempt was made. Hanneman recognized the presence of bacteria in many forms of epidemic and acute illnesses. So Hanneman was the first person to recognize or to observe the presence of bacteria in many epidemics and acute illnesses. He attributed to these animal forms too minute for the eye to see. And he said that these bacteria 
they were very minute and you could not see it by the naked human eye. Hanneman discovery was made 60 years before Cox isolated the tubercular bacillus. So you could see Hanneman was a precursor of bacteriology because even Cox isolated the tubercular bac bacilli after, after 60 years. As Cuvier classified zoology into four great kingdoms, so Hanneman classified diseases into four great divisions. So just as Cuvier classified the, the, the zoology of the animal kingdom into the four great kingdoms, so Hanneman also divided disease into the four great divisions. After several years of hard work, Hanneman was able to trace the cause of each disease to its origin and place it in its proper classification. And place it in its proper classification. So Hanneman, he had worked very hard and he was be, and he was able to trace the cause of each disease and accordingly classify it under a proper scientific classification. The first of these classifications was simple, is that it embraces all disease that might spring from mechanical and exterior sources. So the first classification was quite simple, and it included those diseases which arose from any mechanical and exterior sources. This included the fractures, strains, improper diet, external poisons such as fumes or noxious plants, extreme of thermic conditions such as frostbite or sunstroke, and all genetically determined diseases. In this class, the condition was largely self-curative and may be rectified by regulating the environmental and habits. So in this class, whereby the disease is sprang from mechanical or exterior sources, the, the uh, the treatment was to rectify on and regulate the environmental and the habits of the person. If you do that, the disease would be miti mitigated. Why? Because it was a mechanical or an exterior source. So you modify the source, exterior source, or take away the mechanical aid which is responsible for it, then the disease condition is quite simple to cure. However, medicine may assist and hasten the recovery. But, but he said that, however, Medicines may be useful to hasten the recovery. In this classification of disease, it may be mixed with more deep seated conditions from another and deeper origin. So, in this classification, the disease or the or the or, or the or the diseases which were more deep seated or serious had its origin much deeper than what was thought of. This may be so complicate the matter so that medicines will be required to elevate the resultant distress. So since the origin was a deep seated or it had a deeper origin, naturally they, it would require some medicine to elevate the distress. It was Hanneman's teaching that the removal of the cause was the first step in the proper method of cure. This may include surgical procedure, rectification of diet, removal of irritating substances, change of environment, etc. So Hanneman's first teaching was to remove the cause. So if you remove the cause, the disease may, may be all right or may be mitigated. For example, any surgical procedures or some modification in diet, removal of an irritating substance, any change of environment, etc. Everything should be done that may place the patient in the best possible relation for complete cure which will take place on its own once the cause is removed. So Hanneman's again telling us that you must do everything possible for a complete cure to take place because once the cause is removed, the cure will take place on its own. Hanneman made careful observations about the disease conditions which were under homeopathic treatment. So as you all know, Dr. Hanneman had treated many, many cases and he went on observing what was the result of such treatment? This further added to the knowledge of disease development and progress. So then, if you if Hanneman observed all the disease conditions with what he had treated, this would give him a proper idea how the disease developed and how the disease progressed. This was true for the non-venereal disease. While treating seemingly acute conditions with apparent success, to his surprise, these cases would return with a recurrence of symptoms at regular intervals. So Dr. Henneman found out that though he had treated acute, seemingly acute conditions, see the wording, seemingly acute conditions with great success, he found out that 
the cases would again return with the recurrence of symptoms at a regular intervals. Sometimes these symptoms were very similar to those they had before, while at times there would be an aggravation of the previous condition or other variations. So what symptoms would, re what symptoms would reoccur? They were very similar to what they had before. That means what symptoms had disappeared, again those symptoms had reappeared, or, or so it was so that the symptoms were in an aggravation of a previous condition or some other variation was available. This made Hanneman to think that there was some underlying condition which was the mainspring of the recurrent manifestation. So this made Hanneman think that there should, that there should be some underlying condition which was responsible for the recurrent manifestations or for the recurrence of the disease at regular intervals. It was causing more or less gradually a retrograde condition, although the acute manifestations were apparently met and conquered by the homeopathic remedy. So what was it? So what happened? It was causing a more or less retrograde condition. Retrograde meaning what? Those symptoms which had disappeared, they had again come back. Although the acute manifestations were apparently met with and conquered by the homeopathic remedy. But most of the acute manifestations were conquered by the homeopathic remedy, but few of them, they again reoccurred. It occurred to him that he was treating in these acute conditions, not only a part of the real disease, otherwise the disease would have become completely and permanently cured by the administration of the simulum. So this made Hanneman to think that while treating the acute conditions, only a part of the real disease was treated. He did not take the full totality into consideration. So if he would take the full totality into consideration, the disease would have completely and permanently cured by the administration of the simulum. In this study of disease, he separated all disease conditions into four great groups. The mechanical conditions were easily detected and, uh, de uh, detected and classified to the three remaining groups Hanneman gave the term myasm. So one was the mechanical conditions and the uh, other three groups were the myasm, sora, syphilis and psychosis. So that's all for this part. Part two will be coming up next. Please be, please be stay tuned for more. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.